Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Barbara Drazga. That's not a typo. D R A Z G A. You can find me at facebook.com slash groups slash deal diva. And I'll tell you how I hear it. You guys can just pass these around. I'll tell you how I got that name. Um, I was sourcing at auctions uh, quite a bit for the past five years. I buy things at auctions. And um, there was this one guy, really big guy, and I, I would beat him out of things. So he would position himself in front of me. Right, and block my view of the auctioneer so the auctioneer couldn't see my bid. So I would just like lean over and wink at the auctioneer and place my bid, and it got to be a little bit of a fun game. Well, he wasn't happy about it, and uh, I, I beat him out of a, a, a prize that he wanted at some point. And he turned around and he said, Oh, you're just a deal diva. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool, that's my nickname. So I have the Deal Diva, uh, which means I'm really good at, um, at making deals with wholesaler suppliers and with factories and just negotiating good deals on stuff. So that's how I got that nickname. So um, tonight, today we're going to talk about, um, first I've been selling online since like 1996. I've been an Amazon seller for three and a half years now. Uh, I realized pretty quickly that um, Amazon, uh, the competition on Amazon was, first of all, there's a learning curve. And the competition on Amazon is increasing with more and more sellers coming in every single day. Uh, and also the, uh, the method of sourcing that most people start with, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, is not really sustainable. So it's a great place to start and get your feet wet and learn how to source products to sell on Amazon or pretty much anywhere. Uh, but it's, you know, you're running around from store to store. I did that with a minivan and a trailer attached during my first Q4. And I did great. I filled the minivan with stuff in the trailer, and then I'd come home and I sold my couches to make room for all the stuff. So I mean, <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I sold my couches at this big area, and I would just, you know, prep, buy, prep, buy, prep, buy. It was incredible. My first Q4 was off the charts. I didn't know my own name come January 1st. I was so darn exhausted, and I decided there's got to be a better way to do this. So I dug in, and I discovered bundling. I didn't discover it. A, a lot of people have been bundling products for, um, well, look at retailers. You walk into any large retailer, Walmart, are these gift boxes that they sell, and packages of different spices, um, like Jeff was talking about. Bundling has been around uh, by big box stores for decades and decades, right? So bringing that concept to um, whatever marketplace I was selling on made sense to me because it would reduce my risk of having other people jump on my listings if I did it the right way. So I just started experimenting and playing with it, and I uh, got really good at it. I created a course called the Bumble Masterclass. You go to bumblemasterclass.com. There's a bunch of free videos up there you can watch and articles. Um, but today I want to talk about thank you for sharing what platforms you're selling on. Uh, and I love that it's a good mix because uh, we're not, I'm not going to talk to you as an Amazon seller so much as someone who sells stuff online. Okay? So it doesn't matter what platform you're selling on. Um, you, we've already surveyed where you guys source. So, well, you, you do a lot of, uh, you're doing OA right now, which is online arbitrage. But how are the rest of you sourcing? Those of you who are selling on eBay or um, Macari, how are you finding your products? Some of it's wholesale. Some of it's what? Some of it's wholesale. Okay, so we've got wholesale sourcing. Does anybody uh, order direct from China, Alibaba, AliExpress? Anybody doing that? Thrift stores? Who does thrift stores? I do. Uh, AliExpress and Alibaba. AliExpress and Alibaba. Who buys at thrift stores? New or used so items, so right? So yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. yeah. Thrift store shopping is fun. It's not sustainable um, yeah, it's not as a business model, but thrift stores are a great, great way to find product ideas that I didn't even know existed. You walk into a thrift store and see something that's, oh my gosh, what is this unicorn coffee mug thing? And I'll see if I can sell it. And it sells immediately. Now you know to go find a wholesale source and bundle with other unicorn stuff so that nobody can hop on your listing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so today I'm just gonna talk about um, my concept behind creating a product bundle to lock down or competition-proof that bundle regardless of what the product is, okay? Um, so my goal is to have consistent sales year-round. Now, a lot of people, when they talk about bundling, they think, uh, you know, a Valentine's bundle um, to sell during Valentine's Day or a, a birthday bundle, or no, not birthday, that would be year-round, but um, Easter baskets. That's a great example of something that's seasonal. So seasonal bundles are great to do during those seasons, but then you get that pop of sales and it's gone for another year. Uh, my concept is to sell year-round. So I want bundles, I want products that, uh, that people will buy throughout the year, and then I can supplement that income with the seasonal bundles if I want. But I focus on ever creating evergreen bundles 
And you know, an evergreen tree, it doesn't lose its leaves unless it's, you know, along a highway or something, but it stays uh, green year round. Uh, I look to build evergreen bubbles. So um, also I want predictable product sources. So when we source thrift stores or auctions or any place where we can just get um, like liquidation where we get a bunch of product, but then we can't replenish it, can't get it. Those are great again for a pop in sales, but unless you find or create a source for those products, it's not sustainable. So one of my other criteria for every bundles is to make sure that I find products from sources that I can dip into that well over and over and over again, or create my own version of those products. Does that make sense? Yes. Does anybody have any quick questions about what I just covered? Good, okay. I don't want to lose anybody, so if you, if you have a question, I know I go really fast. Um, go ahead and raise your hand. I am working on recording this, so hopefully the audio will show up and you can rewatch it later and slow me down in your uh, control of one panel. So, um, I believe in a customer eccentric approach. Thank you. I'm just going to put this here if you don't mind. Yeah. A customer eccentric approach to creating product. Now, what most people do is they'll start with product. You go to a store, you find a spice pack, you find a cool product, and you say, well, what else can I put with this? So, I flip that upside down. And I talk about customer-centric, immediate customer's needs, or feeding a passion. So here's the interactive part of this presentation, because I never just stand up here and be a talking head. That wouldn't be any fun. I think you guys are all really interesting and smart people. I love what you're, that you're all doing something a little bit different. So um, let, I, I'd like to kind of corral that so we can learn from each other during this presentation. <laughs> so what are some passions or hobbies? We have Comic-Con over here. That was cool. That is a passionate niche market, right? What are some passions or hobbies that you guys do or know of or have family members? Just shout pets. them out. What's that? Pets. Pets. Okay, what kind of pets? Any kind of pets. Okay, we're going to niche it down though, so I'm going to challenge you a little bit. Dogs. What kind of dogs? Yorkies. Yorkies. There we go. So Yorkie, little fluffy dog. Can you imagine a party bubble for a female Yorkie dog with a little hat and a little, you know, little unicorn horn and little, you know, Yorkie decorations, right? There's a bundle right there, not just for dogs. But for small Yorkie dog, female dogs specifically, you niche it down. What what else? I like to do hiking, like a walking, jogging. Walking. So there's trail running. Do you like to run the trails? Yes. And there's people who also like to hike, like off trail, and you picture those big um, hiking boots, and they've got those walking sticks. So you would do a bundle for someone who specifically wants to do that kind of hiking, or is a trail runner like I am. So there's certain needs for us trail runners, right? Uh, that we would need that maybe a hiker doesn't need. What else? What other hobbies, passions do you guys have? Or problems that you have? Do you have insomnia? Anybody have insomnia? Oh. Hay fever, right? Right. Insom how about an insomnia for entrepreneurial women? Insomnia bum a bundle or sleep well bundle for women entrepreneurs. Right? Do you see how I did that? It's not just a sleep well bundle because anybody can jump on that. But when you niche it down to, uh, let's say, so I'm in my 50s, so let's say um, a, a, a sleep well bundle for women in, what are, what are we supposed to be called? Baby boomers, boomers, or whatever, yeah. over the hill women, whatever. <laughs> baby, baby boomer women. That's a huge market, but a specific need in that huge market. And the solutions you can put in there could be, uh, you can write marketing material around for that niche market. Instead of just a sleep better bubble, you're really niching it down to solve a problem for a specific market. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, give me one more. Passion or problem? Reading. Reading, what, is that a passion or a problem? A uh, passion. Mm -hmm. And could it be a problem? Probably, yes. In what way? Because I'd rather read than do something else. Okay, okay. what else? Not enough light. What read else? Oh, yeah. Glasses. Glasses. Bookmark. Glasses. Okay, lights, glasses, bookmark. Okay, so I, I once, I don't know where I bought them, but I bought these reading glasses once that had this little light on it with a battery pack in it. So I just turn on and then the light would come out on both sides. How cool is that, right? But then of course I have to have a little hanger on it and I want a cute little case with bling because you're gonna do uh, lighted reading glasses for women, boomer women, who like bling. You see how I really niche that down. So you start with a passion or a problem to be solved and then you find niche markets for it and then you build out a bundle for that niche market that solves a problem or feeds a passion. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I know. Yes. My mom likes, likes knitting, you know, the cigar. She likes knitting. Okay. She okay. likes that. Okay. So, so how about a knitting bundle, um, a, a knitting pattern with the uh, with a bunch of pink and green and yellow yarn and little knitting needles for uh, Yorkie dog owners? 
<laughs> now, I did what is called a mashup. So I took that market and I mashed it up with this market. So do you think Angela, who loves to knit, would think it would be really cool to create a little sweater in lime green and pink for her Yorkie female dog? There are people out there like Angela who would buy that bundle. How much competition do you think you're going to have on a bundle like that? So when you approach bundling from a customer-centric approach where you get inside the mind and the heart of your customer or your potential customer, it's a completely different approach than pretty much any other seller is taking, uh, and you're going to beat them out every time. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going fast, so throw out your questions. You got anything? Okay. What yes. About, what about the marketing on that? Because you can break something down to such a niche, and then how do you reach your audience? Great question. So you asked uh, marketing, how do you reach your audience? So let's say you're selling on Amazon or eBay, the two bigger marketplaces. You can also sell on your own website, for example, um, and drive your own traffic from Facebook or Pinterest or uh, other social media sites, right? So uh, I'll give you a live example. Right now, I bought six pallets of bling wine glasses. I should have brought one with me. I'm sorry I didn't. But they have little crystals on them and all sorts of different sayings, and there's 45 different designs. Um, some of them have mermaids. Some of them have unicorns, by the way, to crazy fanatical markets. Some of them have Day of the Dead on them. So what I'll do is I'll put... Uh, I'll, I'll sell them individually on my own website, which will be a WordPress with a WooCommerce plugin. You can also do a Shopify site. You can sell them on Amazon, eBay. It doesn't matter where I'm selling them. It matters how I'm marketing them. So let's say I create, there are women who actually have uh, weddings that are themed, unicorn themed or mermaid themed. Okay? So the night before, what do, what do women do before their wedding? The night before, they get together with the girls and they have what? A bachelorette party. And what do they do? Do they drink alcohol or do they teetotal? A lot of times they're drinking alcohol. So let's say that you put together a bundle of, I've got four different designs of uh, unicorn wine glasses that are really cute and have different sayings and glitter and sparkle and pretty color. I put them together as a bundle of four with uh, little wine tags, right, the little uh, wine charms, and put that together as a bundle and sell that as a bachelorette party of uh, wine drinkers bundle for people who are having a unicorn themed wedding. Does that make sense? So then I can go on social media, for example, and it doesn't matter where you're selling this stuff, whether it's Amazon, eBay, your own website, and I can create, I actually created a website page just for these wine glasses to experiment with. It's called Bling My Wine. So I just started it, I'm playing with it. There's a video up there, there's a little bit of content, but I'm experimenting there. So I created a page called Bling My Wine. And now I'm going to drive traffic from that page by ads to my website. But I'll write really great marketing material, not just for the wine glasses, but for a specific niche market. So one of them is a day in the dead wine glass. So I will write copy around that day of the dead wine glass, and I might um, bundle it together with like a little day of the dead face, skull, uh, bling charm. But I will write copy that targets people who love Day of the Dead, and I'll do keyword research on like MerchantWords.com and SpyFu and Google Trends and um, Google AdWords, right, to get the keywords. And I'll put uh, Spanish keywords in there, like Dia de los Muertos, right, in order to drive traffic to that website and really, I'm not selling the wine glass, I'm selling, who said it in here earlier? You're selling an experience? You're selling a memory, right? So I'm selling an experience when I sell a bundle, which is actually a great segue to, I brought pop props. You guys want to, want to see me stop talking now so I can show you some fun stuff, right? Okay, so some of it is just real basic, simple. Um, this is a bundle with a, a cute little layette set, little baby set for newborn boys. It's got, so here are the, uh, the keywords. It's got sports on it. So I can hit football and baseball and soccer because it's got all of them on it. Baby boy blue. But then I put a gift box and a little piece of blue cray paper in there and a little gift card. A little gift card, right? All of this was sourced at dollar stores. So what I'll do is I'll test this bundle out, and if it works, I bought like a couple of dozen of them. If it works, then I can go to China, and I can see, okay, where can I? This this concept worked. Now where can I get something like this made, but with my brand on it, and then have a, a sort a, a constant source for this particular product? Does that make sense? So you can use smaller uh, places where you can buy smaller MOQ like wholesalers or local stores to test out a dozen or two dozen of a concept, and then if it hits, figure out why it hits. It would be because it's a um, newborn baby, it's a gift, it's bundled as a gift to give immediately, 
You don't have to buy anything else. You give this gift to somebody, right? And it hits the other keywords of sports. So it's not just a baby gift. It's a baby gift for sports lovers and football fans. Would you agree that sports lovers are a fanatical market? <laughs> right? And they have a little baby boy, and that baby boy, darn it, from the second he's born, they're going to groom him to be a soccer player. Right? So there are people with that mindset, that's my target market for this. The mother or the grandmother buying for that kid whose dad is a sports fanatic or mom's a sports fanatic. Make sense? Okay. Can we keep going? I got fun stuff here. Um, I love props. <laughs> All right, here's another one. So here's the um, here's where I'm selling the emotion. I'm selling the the uh, the solution. I sell bedding. I have a bedding company called Posh Linens. Okay, so I sell bed sheets, comforters, blankets, etc. So I had these pink bed sheets that I'm just having trouble selling for some reason. So I decided to sell it as a princess bedding set. So not only do they get so now it's completely changed my marketing. Instead of selling pink bed sheets. I am selling a solution for moms who want to make a princess bedroom for their little girl from like the age of two years old because this is a full set probably like four years old to 12 years old they're in that that full size bed right so now I can write my marketing materials around create the perfect princess bedroom for your little girl right it's got this cute little heart pillow there you go right a little pinky right blingy and then I've got these um, cute little, I put it in, this is a three piece bundle, that, the bed sheets, and then this little eye mask, oh, this little blingy eye mask, right? So for little girls. Uh, so this is a solution bundle. I'm not selling bed sheets anymore. I'm selling um, the feeling that little girl's gonna get when she comes home and she's got this cute little pillow on the bed, the pink bed sheets, and the cute little eye mask, right? And I can even go further and put other stuff with it. I can put like a little manicure kit with it. You know, you could, I don't, you don't have to put 85 things in a bundle. It can be just as simple as this um, to create the solution. I know. Anyway, so. Also, oh, people so buy that easily as a gift because yeah. it's like, oh, she likes princess. Yeah. Oh, pr and princess is huge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the keywords are princess, yeah. uh, bedding, princess gift, princess bedroom, yeah. princess, yeah. yeah. So anyway, this is a cute little wallet I got on liquidation for a dollar. I put it together with a, this is Day of the Dead. Now, skulls are really, uh, it's one of those keywords like unicorns and mermaids that there's a huge target market for it, but niche markets like people who like the bikers, People like Day of the Dead, something about the skull image sells well. Pirates. So at Pirates, right, so I got lucky and I got this cute little wallet for a dollar liquidation. I bought them all when I found them. But what happens with liquidation? A liquidation buy means you can't you can't replenish it, right? So I went on AliExpress and I bought I found these black scarves, pashminas that went all the way down with pretty much the exact image on it. I couldn't believe it. So the whole bundle cost me $4.88. I sell it for $25 on Amazon. So it got consistent sales. I went back to the manufacturer. I said, please, 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 can I have more wallets? He said, we don't have any more. So when I go to China, by the way, guys, I'm going to China again oh, in uh, September, I'm going to Yiwu Market. I was at Canton Fair last year. Um, so I'll be sourcing a lot of cool stuff. And I'm going as part of a leadership team for a, a, a group of people that are going. Uh, and I'll be the person teaching how to create product bundles, which is really cool. So if you guys want to go, hit me up and I'll send you the link to the website. Okay. So I, my, one of my goals is to find a wallet very similar to that at EU Market. Uh, maybe even cheaper for, than a dollar. I'm guessing I could probably get it cheaper than a dollar. 50 cents. 50 cents. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> so I'm very excited. And I found the source for scarves that is replenishable on AliExpress. So um, that, that will be a regular bundle for me once I can replenish this. So uh, what problem is that solving? It's not, but it's, well, it kind of is. Look at this. What did she just do? Yeah. She put her cell phone in there. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. That's my interest in it. Okay, you just gave me more keywords for this. Because yeah. it didn't occur to me this would be a cell phone yeah. holder, but that's the first thing. Yeah. She, she did everything in it. Put her, put her, so that's really bike, cool. put your cell phone in there. That's really cool. <laughs> Well, the reason I put a scarf with it is because I asked myself, okay, so write this down. There are two questions I ask myself. When, when I now I have a product in my hand and I need to figure out what else to put with this but make sure I'm not product centric remember I want to be customer centric so here's what I ask who would buy this who would buy this and why so somebody first of all it's got this nice fabric right so it's not it doesn't feel like that cheapy right, right. it's got a really cool um, design on it it's black we know kind of our target markets but why do they buy it 
because it's useful, it looks cool, it holds there. Okay, so what else, here's the next question. Who would buy it, why, and what else would they buy? So I'm thinking, okay, I don't just want to throw something with this, like a keychain, just so nobody else can hop on my listing, because my goal is to wow that customer. When they get it and they open the box, and, and I, they see that I put it in wrapping paper and tissue paper and a little box, and wrapped up the scarf nice, and they open it, and I found these Day of the Dead uh, stickers, put the sticker on the box. When they open that box, I want them to be wowed, right? Because Amazon likes it when we treat their customers like the queen. Okay, so I thought, well, if I were, if it were me, it's not really my kind of thing, but if it were me and I was getting this, because I was a skull fanatic, what else would I want? I like, I like cute purses, and I like cute shoes, and ooh, a black purse. Oh man, it would be so cool to have a matching scarf to tie my black purse. And what if I had luggage and I was traveling, and all my luggage is black, and I want to be able to identify the luggage when it comes down. I'm going to tie the scarf on the luggage. It's a pashmina, which means it's a really long scarf, so I can wrap it over me. So the, the scarf makes sense for me. As opposed to a what's that? Do luggage tags, luggage tags. Yeah. Luggage tags. It would be luggage another one. That's tags. awesome. Thank you. I might... uh, neck pillow um, ne for the plane. There you go. Neck pillow. For... The yeah. So you... I know mean, just with this image, if you just start with, forget that this is a wallet, and you just start with an image or a fanatical niche market like Yorkie dogs, and you start brainstorming. Okay, who would buy this and why? Why do they like this image? Then you can go off on all sorts. You can do mashups of people who like skulls or people like Yorkie dogs and like to hike. Do those Yorkie dogs or little dogs have some, maybe um, little booties, you know, their feet would hurt, maybe a little carry backpack, oh that'd be cool, right? Like a, a baby backpack, a baby carrier, but for little dogs with little doggy uh, silicon booties and okay, this is, and a little doggy scarf, and, right? <laughs> like, I love hiking, right? I just pulled a bubble. Oh, I love those things. <laughs> 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 Well, see my point, right? She's fanatical about two completely different markets, but when you mash them up and you create a bundle, Angela will look at that listing and go, oh my God, shut up and take my money. This is awesome. My God, it's going to be so cute. We get so happy together, right? So that's my point in showing you this image. Um, so I've got a, a little quiz for you. These are fun. So I have these. I bought this liquidation, and um, there's six different designs. And I sold them as a bundle of six. So what I did to lock this down so nobody else could hop on it was I created an adoption certificate, okay? Right, there's an adoption certificate this way. And I put on there that you can name, here you go, you know, that you can name your, um, uh, it, it, you have to put the, the child puts their own name in there so it makes it interactive, right? And then um, it says, the names are blank the pig, blank the dog, blank the frog. So I, I went one step further and I put every one of the, uh, the animals on here to make it something that they could frame. So then what I did, because anybody can create this, recreate this and print this out and go buy puppets, right? So then what I did was I sourced some white boxes, just a little box that you fold and closes in, but then I had printed on it air holes. <laughs> right? To make it look like you're adopting these six cute animal puppets. Thank you. So on the inside of the box, uh, I printed a, so when you turn it upside down, it becomes a stage. So now they can do puppet shows in front of this barnyard stage. And all that was was printing on the box. Now how hard do you think it's going to, do you think that the lazy sellers, and there are a lot of them out there, are going to take the time to go print a box the way that I did and get creative and do that? They might have, you know, just done the certificate. But when you do, I, I have a saying, um, the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra. Mm -hmm. So as sellers, no matter where you're selling, when you just do that little extra and get a little bit creative and really um, make your goal to meet your customer's desires, the money will come. Okay? Yes, Sandy. I saw one of the worst examples of bundling I've ever seen. Uh -oh. I've, been so, I've been listing a lot in grocery, uh -huh. and there's one guy that's been you know, three pack of this and the and my sticky notes. Yeah, so Which some is, people I call that company on it. Yeah. So what they do is they take they take you know uh, a couple of different things, put it in a bundle, and then put a keychain in there that has absolutely uh -huh. nothing to do with a sticky pad, right? Don't do that. It's called With bundle stuff. But here's why. Here's the, what, what did we just learn? What is the, if you had to take one piece of information away from this presentation that is the core of all of this? What is it? 
focus on the customer. That's it. Customer centric approach to research. That's it, right? So once you start, I know she's, she, okay, now, now hold the puppet up. What do we know about Angela? What does Angela have at home? Doggy. A uh, doggy. Now, could we sell this as a dog toy bundle? An interactive dog toy bundle for dogs who are afraid of other animals to teach them how to not be afraid, and, right? A low risk way. This is off the top of my head, right? So what else could, how else could we market these? And I actually did this. Would everybody agree that golfers are a fanatical market? So I went to Goodwill and I bought two golf clubs. I bought a big one and a little one, I guess it's a putter and a wood, or I don't know the difference between them, right? right? To see whether or not these suckers would fit on top of it, and they do. So now I can take the exact same product, right? And I can even, when I go to Yiwu, I can find other puppets um, and just remarket them to the golf lover's market, right? Just put together a golf lover, what, what are they called? You sell like you golf? Yeah, yeah. Uh, golf club covers, club right? Club covers, yeah. So how fun would that be to do that? So do you see, we just took we just took something and we asked the right questions. Who would use this and why and what else would they use? I, I would put matching golf balls with their uh, with the puppet. Oh, matching on the golf ball. Very cool. And so I love that you just brought that up. She said that um, she would put matching golf balls or print on the golf balls with the so animal have, on the golf ball. Right. So have you guys ever heard of? Uh, I know you have because you've got some in a bag right there. Promotional products. Those pens that Helen has in a the bag there. So you can go to a promotional product company and you can say, okay, I want 100 golf balls with a cow printed on it. Mm -hmm. And then you put that together with this, nobody can jump on your listing. N nobody is going to take, you know, most people put their logo on a golf ball or a logo on, um, what else can you buy from a promotional company? Everything. Anything. Everything. Anything. Mugs, bags, everything. mugs, pens, everything, right? So you go to a promotional company, instead of putting your logo on, buy, check out Vistaprint.com. They have a whole yes. promotional area now. In fact, these coffee mugs, the Deal Diva coffee mugs, were from, yes, I do have them, uh, were, from, uh, were from Vistaprint. So you take now, uh, you have a, a photographer take a picture of this guy and make a rendering of it, so you can now put it on a mug, right? And boom, now you've got another bubble. I can, I can make bundles all day long. It's just fun. <laughs> Come on, isn't this is fun, right? Mm -hmm. Once you start, it, like you just have fun with it. It takes the stress off of oh, I gotta sell something on Amazon, and it turns it into what do people want and why, and how can I go make it for them and get creative about it and have fun. You guys having fun? Yeah. Okay. A couple more. I've got a couple more examples. Good. All right. This one's interactive. Well, they're all interactive. So, what do they say was one of the crazy fanatical markets that I just don't understand, but it's fanatical? Unicorns! Oh, yeah. Unicorn horns, right? We're going to get into the minds of, and hearts of our customers here. So, so what else? We're going to practice, right? What else do you want? Something coming, right? So the unicorn party hats. Go ahead and open them up. Come on. Right? Oh, my God. So you are now all unicorns. So who would, what are the questions? What's the first question you want to ask? We've got a unicorn on there. What else do we have? Who would buy? <laughs> no, who would buy this stuff, right? Who would buy this thing? Yeah, we got to show the unicorn. If you can wear the unicorn. There we go. We got unicorn. There we go. We got the unicorn. We got the unicorn. Oh, look at this. She's got it on. That's hilarious. That's really funny. Okay, so who would buy these things? Who would? Pudding just came out with unicorn. the unicorn. I saw those. I can't wait. Unicorns are crazy. So why would you buy these? Uh, my niece is crazy pink unicorn. The little neighbor oh girl is crazy yeah. pink unicorn. Right. The, 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 yes. the, like, well, what else do they? How about you? Why would you buy it? <laughs> Um, I don't know. It'd just be fun. She like, you know, her dog. Her dog. Her dog. Her dog. I just purchased one of these. <laughs> The Jojo Bows. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Have you ever heard of Jojo? No, no, never. Heard. It's one of these dance girls from Dance okay. Moms. She sells the bow. They sell oh, the okay. Bows. Thank you. And then there was a bow that had a little. What does it to say? What market? Kids. Dance girls. Dance, dance, dance girls. girls. That's a crazy fanatical market. Girls yeah. who dance. Or pageants. Or pageants. That's also yeah. crazy, right? So what if you, what could you buy? Cosplay. No, just What could you buy? They just choose you. What else? Yes. What else so could they buy? Costumes. If you're if you're going for the little girl dance market, what age range is that? Mm. Oh. Four and four and four twelve. Let's say four and twelve. Just so we have a range here. So um, what else? Bag. Bag. Shoes. 
shoes and socks, right? Yeah. 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 You have a color makeup and fake yeah. nails. Yeah. That's a whole different level, right? And the whole thing with the nails, you just peel and stick. Right, but you could do a unicorn yeah. themed um, glamour bundle, party bundle for right. dance girls who are having a slumber party. That was yeah. off the top of my head. So now you've got dance kids, dance girls, unicorns, slumber party. Great mashup niche markets, right? You get all these keywords that you just put in there. Halloween costumes, Halloween costumes hands down, right? Uh, now let's let's switch it and turn it upside down. Instead of little girls, what's the opposite end of the spectrum of that market? Seniors. Seniors. Okay. So what would seniors do with this? A party. A party. A party. Right. Right. A unicorn senior party. Yeah. Hey, gay pride. Oh, that gay pride. That's oh, right. Yeah. Because that's right. It's a rainbow. A rainbow, uh, right? Yeah. Zumba dance, you know, Zumba classes Zumba for seniors. The, uh, Zumba dance for seniors? Oh, that's really they, they cool. They do chair Zumbas, right? Chair Zumba Chair classes. Zumbas, so what else would they need, right? So do you see how easy it is when you start? We didn't really talk about product. We use, <laughs> we use this as kind of like a way to, to get our juices going. But once we, once we get into the brainstorming, you're really just brainstorming fanatical target markets. What would they want? Why would they buy this? What else would they buy? And then who else would buy this? And that's how we got to three different target markets for these. And four or five. What about kids who have Asperger's? Is that, did I say that right? Or, or what are some of the other um, autism. autism, right? Where they have trouble interacting with humans, but maybe you can reach them through puppets. Or how about kids who have been abused? Right? So um, the therapy aspect of it, maybe you can sell these bundles to doctor's offices for the therapy to get kids to open up. So there's so many, when you stop looking at the product itself and you start looking at what problem does it solve, need does it meet, or passion does it feed, then you can brainstorm the wazoo. How many target markets and ideas do we just come up with in, what, 30 minutes? A couple dozen. Yeah, easy. And, you know, we had to rein it in because we have limited time. But if you just let yourself go for a couple of hours, you would have non-stop target market ideas that you could source for. So I've got one more. Got one more, and then, I'll, and then we'll, I'm gonna do a giveaway. Okay, so zombies, another crazy target market. So do you know there's people who like zombies? Uh, there's TV shows, there's, uh, what, you're in You're in the comic book space. There's gotta be comic books for it. Well, there's also the- Games. There's also like the horror side with oh, it. And, and there's actually conventions that are completely around the horror. So people will dress up just for that. Is that right? Yeah, Hold, yeah I mean, they probably look at me in the morning. Um, so, uh, <laughs> that's awesome. I did not know that, so you know I'm going to go find that uh, one of those conventions. And um, and I go to these conventions that I know, like there was a reptile convention locally, and I went to it just to understand the market. And it was interesting. I got an education, definitely. Um, but what else? Uh, video games. Is that a fanatical market? People, uh, there are zombie uh, video games. So here's what, one of the things I did with this. I can sell it as is, but that's, you know, I'm a bundle crazy person. So, so what I did was I put coffee with it, but I found this place that I could white label their coffee. Does everybody know what white label means? Mm -hmm. So it's basically, for those of you who don't, I don't. Uh, okay, so white label is basically, uh, you, you, you supply these, and I say, man, I really like these, but I want, I want my company name to be on the strap. Can you do that for me? And you said, yeah, sure. You're white labeling it with my company name. You already have the product as a supplier, right? So basically, I found a coffee supplier that um, they made these smaller packs of coffee that were just a, a plain wrapper, and I had them put a sticker on it for zombie coffee, okay? And then I made, now, could anybody probably copy that, right? But you know me, I really want to lock down my bundles. So what else, let's practice, what else do people do when they're drinking their coffee in the morning? We've got a, a male one, the waking dead, no brains before coffee. <laughs> and we have a female one, the talking dead, don't speak to me until I've had my coffee. <laughs> so you picture in the morning, this husband and wife, they're sitting there, they're drinking out of their zombie coffee mugs, right? What else might they do? Hey. They're zombie slippers. Right. What else? Zombie <laughs> slippers. They, I didn't think about that. Awesome. What else? Yeah. Some creamer. Some creamer, okay. Some Irish Okay, so what else? What yes, else? Napkins. Napkins. Now, back in my day, you know, we weren't just sitting there on our cell phones. We were actually doing what with the newspaper? Crossword puzzle. Crossword, crossword puzzle. So I hired a guy for 20 bucks or something to create a word search puzzle, a zombie word search puzzle for me. And then on the flip side of the paper, 
a crossword puzzle, a zombie crossword puzzle. Okay? And then I went to AliExpress and I found these pens, just a regular ink pen, uh, with zombies on them. Who'd have thunk, right? And I ordered a bunch of those and I put it together as a bre zombie breakfast bundle. So it's got this, it's got coffee, it's got, uh, and I had the, um, I used Vistaprint to print out on cardstock, not regular paper, but cardstock, the puzzle. Because again, it's about customer experience. If I put a cheap piece of paper in there and they're writing on the pen and it rips it, that's a bad experience. So I put it on cardstock. The perceived value is higher. So now they're filling it out on cardstock. It's a pleasant experience in the morning. Make sense? Yeah. So I sold out of them. I got. I have to get more. Uh, but then what else could I do? These are sold as a set, right? Pick these up. They're in a set. But what if I did this? And I just sold the female one. What else could I put? Who would buy just the the one for women? Lesbians. Lesbians. Okay. Well, no. or is it, it's a gift for it's a gift for women. So maybe it's not the women buying it. Maybe yeah. it's the men buying it for the girlfriends, right? So what could you do to make this a bundle where when the girlfriend gets it, she goes, "Oh my God, a zombie mug with what in it?" How about zombie mints, zombie marshmallows, zombie... Oh. Uh, could we find a zombie puppet? I bet you we could. Could we find like a plush <laughs> zombie we could stick in there and then put it in a cellophane bag with a couple of other cute zombie things and make it into a, a gift basket, a girl zombie gift basket, right? And uh, put a little bow on top and put it into a box. So it is a finished gift for a female zombie lover. lover. So now I've, I've doubled the profit potential of this, what used to be, a set of two of his and her zombie mugs. And I've increased the target market. Because who would buy this gift set? It might be a gag gift, a white elephant gift. But this is specifically for a woman zombie mom, a zombie lover. This is specifically for a male zombie lover. So those are just some examples. Have I, I, have I covered uh, enough to make your head swim? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm going to, uh, here's, here's where the uh, here's where your little name tags come in. I'm going to give something away because I, can't, I can never come to a party. And if not, you know, I, I either bring flowers or I give something away. So go ahead and take your name tags off. <laughs> Sorry. I, I would have, if I thought ahead, I, I would have gotten little, you know, tags, yeah, whatever. Right. And fold it in half so they don't see each other. And uh, go ahead and put them in the Deal Diva mug. Oh, pass the Deal Diva mug around. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I've just, just changed my mind on what I'm going to give away, too, which seems more fun. Okay. So do you guys have any questions while I'm waiting? First of all, uh, I'm going to China. If anybody wants to go to China with me as part of a group in September, absolutely. Um, you've got my card. You can reach out to me on Facebook. And um, I'm also, uh, I also, that's okay. I'll wait until she's done. Okay. So I also have the Bundle Masterclass. So this was just a little bit of a taste. There's like a dozen modules, a whole bunch of lessons, um, and I teach you how to, it's basically what, what we just started with here, and then move all the way into how to source, how to market um, off of Amazon, et cetera, uh, and that's at bundlemasterclass.com. 